respond to the video and uh, be active in uh, participation. It will be more interactive session rather than a didactic lecture. So thank you, uh, Dr. Ajit Babu, and thank you to all office bears for this kind invitation. So today's uh, topic is gonioscopy. And before I start, I would request all postgraduate, whenever they join ophthalmology, so you have to buy ophthalmoscope and 90D. So at that time, you must buy a gonioscope because till the time you do 100, 200 gonioscopies yourself, you will not get an idea of how the anterior chamber angle looks like. So in your OPD day, at least one to two gonioscopies you should do in every OPD. And then by three to six months, you will get good idea and you will feel very happy to diagnose type of glaucoma and see the abnormalities in the angle. So this lecture, I want to basically highlight the how the anterior chamber angle looks like. And this is not actually my uh, collection. This is hard work of all the residents of RP Center over the last 10, 15 years. After every round day, we go and do gonioscopy and collect the videos. So this is all our publications on gonioscopy with the, all of them have some RPC residents as co-authors. So they have worked a lot for this and I dedicate this lecture to them. So first question is that why should we do gonioscopy in the routine ophthalmic practice? Even when I see glaucoma patients, they will have a diagnosis of glaucoma, optic disc cupping. Very rarely you will see gonioscopy written in the file of an ophthalmologist. Very rare. So this is something which is lacking and why it is important. I'll just explain to you why do we need gonioscopy. So the primary purpose of gonioscopy is to differentiate the two major forms of glaucoma. That is open angle glaucoma from angle closure glaucoma. That is the primary aim of gonioscopy. And why it is important to distinguish these two entities? So in the first entity, this shows the normal open angle. So this is the anterior segment associated image. This is the cornea. This is the area of the angle and this is the trabecular meshwork. So this is an open drainage system. So the aqueous is draining through the trabecular meshwork. And contrast this here, the iris is blocking the area of the angle, the trabecular meshwork. So the basic purpose of gonioscopy is to distinguish open angle from angle closure. So this shows an open angle. You can see this structure is the pigmented trabecular meshwork. So this is the portion of the angle which is draining aqueous. And if you contrast this with this picture here, you can see the trabecular meshwork is blocked. So basically, if the drainage channel is blocked, that is angle closure. And if the drainage channel is open, that is the trabecular meshwork, that is open angle. And the initial treatment is totally different in these two conditions because here you need to do laser iridotomy and here you need to do medical therapy. So this is the primary purpose of gonioscopy to distinguish open angle glaucoma from angle closure glaucoma. So now I'm going to play two videos. So I will like to request Dr. Ranjan. So Dr. Ranjan, can you unmute yourself and speak? Good evening, sir. Yeah, speak loudly. What is the difference between the top and the bottom video? Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes. Yes, yes, good evening. Don't feel shy, even if you're wrong, doesn't matter. Sorry, sir, please repeat, sir. My audio was not good. You have two, two videos, two videos are playing, yes, top sir. one and bottom one. What is the main difference between these two? Sir, in upper one, the trabecular mesure we can see, sir. In lower one, we not, that structure is not visible, sir. So all of you should, very good. So all of you should concentrate on these two videos. If you learn these two videos, then you have learned gonioscopy. So here you see you follow up from the iris. So here you will see above the iris, 
this structure dark grayish band is the ciliary body band and above the ciliary body band you will see this white zone that is the scleral spur and above the scleral spur you will see this pigmented zone that is the pigmented part of the tabecular meshwork then the non pigmented part and the solvage line so any patient where tabecular meshwork and scleral spur is visible is a open angle glaucoma patient mm -hmm. so now you have put in the gonioscope tabecular meshwork scleral spur visible so this is a open angle pathology and contrast to this bottom video here you can see this tabecular meshwork scleral spur are not visible so that means the iris is occluding the drainage portion of the eye that is tabecular meshwork so this is irido corneal apposition so this is gonioscopy of angle closure and this is gonioscopy of open angle so this is the critical aim of gonioscopy to differentiate these two conditions which are very nicely documented in these two videos and this is what you will see on gonioscopy so this is hitlam video 25x mm -hmm. magnification of how actually the angle structure is visible and that is what you have to learn now why it is important to differentiate open angle from angle closure you will see worldwide although primary open angle glaucoma is more common than angle closure glaucoma the ratio is 1 is to 3 but the blindness from angle closure glaucoma is three fold higher as compared to open angle glaucoma so to prevent blindness from glaucoma you have to diagnose angle closure and treat it with laser iridotomy and further treatment so it is very important to distinguish angle closure because that is the main cause of blindness in our country now how to do gonioscopy you have to do it in a dark room and your slit lamp the illumination should be minimum and you should keep not more than 1 to 2 mm height of the slit beam it should never cross the pupil because if the slit beam crosses the pupil it leads to contraction of the pupil and that opens up the angle and initially you people can purchase goldman two mirrors that is quite good for starting gonioscopy to see superior and inferior angle and later on you you may purchase different types of indentation gonioscope once you learn the technique but for beginners this is the ideal gonioscope to start with so this is a technique you just hold a swab stick you retract the lower lid and put the gonioscope in the eye so you have to first explain to the patient this technique because some of the patient are very apprehensive that you are going to put a lens in the eye it is going to you have to have some pressure and secondly you have to apply topical anesthesia and always ask the patient has he come alone driving if the patient has come driving then don't do gonioscopy in both eyes same time because he will have difficulty when he goes back so ideally he should come with public transport or somebody should accompany him you apply topical anesthesia and just retract the lower lid and ask the patient to look up and then apply the gonioscope and you can use any of the artificial tears for gonioscopy or any of the gels available as artificial tear supplements and then use the angle structure so this is the goldman two mirror used for diagnostic gonioscopy and once you learn this is a indentation gonioscope so there are two types the one with the handle is called a posner lens and if you don't have the handle only this gonioscope that is called the suzman lens so here you don't require a coupling fluid and the curvature matches that of the cornea so you see the angle structures and in this technique you can apply pressure and open up the angle so ideally this is the technique for distinguishing appositional closure from synecal closure so you view you can see you can view the angle structures and then apply pressure to open up so the previous one was goldman two mirror and this is the four mirror indentation gonioscope known as the posner lens or the suzman lens without the handle now in recent times you have also have to learn intra operative gonioscopy because lot of the new techniques of glaucoma require gonioscopy assisted surgery 
So this I'm showing you a patient of congenital glaucoma and this is Swan Jacob lens. So here you can see, you will only see a featureless angle and only the iris. So this is an anterior insertion of the iris in a patient of primary congenital glaucoma. And this is an examination under anesthesia. So this type of gonioscopy is required for congenital glaucoma and all for all minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries. So now you can view the angle structures under the microscope. This video depicts the technique and, of direct gonioscopy. And this is another technique. This is the coipis lens. So here a handheld slit lamp is being used and you can put the coipis lens in both the eyes and compare one eye with the fellow eye. So this is a handheld slit lamp. Patient is intubated. This is examination under anesthesia. And you can also do under the microscope. So these are the different techniques of how to do gonioscopy. Now always remember that in this era of glaucoma surgery, you need to learn how to do intraoperative gonioscopy. And for that, you have to do it on the OT table and you have to tilt the patient's eye 45 degree and tilt the microscope 30 to 45 degree. And then you will get a view of the anterior chamber angle. So here you can see on the OT live, so you have to tilt the microscope and now I'm tilting the patient's eye. So then you will get a view of the anterior chamber angle with the Swan Jacob gonioscope. So it's this technique you must learn. And then once you have tilted the eye, you can see eye is being tilted. So this requires you have to put viscoelastic and deepen the anterior chamber. And here you can see now you have to operate on the eye. So this is a goniotomy for primary congenital glaucoma. So you can see you have to view the angle structures. The assistant has to hold the gonioscope and the surgeon has to operate. So you have to require this skill of intraoperative gonioscopy in addition to what you have been used to in the OPD with the Goldman lenses. So intraoperative gonioscopy, 45 degree tilt of the eye the microscope is tilted and then the Swan Jacob intraoperative gonioscope is used and you can see a lot of surgical maneuvers can be done through the gonioscope when you operate on the tabecular meshwork. Now, how to identify the angle structure? I showed you in the video just to re recap, follow up from the iris. Iris visible, then Sridhari body band visible, then this white zone visible, that is scleral spur. Then pigmented part of the tabecular meshwork visible. Then non-pigmented part. And then the Schwalbe's line. If the scleral spur tabecular meshwork is visible, that denotes an open angle pathology. Now, who will volunteer Dr. Pradyumya Mishra? Can you unmute yourself and comment on this video? What do you see? Unmute, unmute yourself, Dr. Pradyuman. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello. So what is your comment on this video? What do you see? Uh, sir, I can see the scleral spur, the uh, posterior pigment epithelium, the anterior pigment epithelium, and the non-pigmented epithelium, and the Schwalbe's line, sir. No, not pigment epithelium, trabecular meshwork, pigmented trabecular meshwork. Yes, so, sir. Very good. So this is open angle. Because scleral spur is visible and pigmented part of tabecular meshwork is visible. Okay. So very good. So diagnosis is open angle type of glaucoma. So who will Dr. Arnab Roy? So can you comment what you see here? So we can see a um, ciliary body band. Very good. So, very good. Therefore, it is an open angle. Yeah. So here, in addition, after the iris ciliary body band is visible, then the scleral spur That's and true. pigmented part of tabecular meshwork. So in myopic patient, you will see deep anterior chamber and the ciliary yeah. body band is visible. So don't confuse this with angle dissection. I'll come later. This is normal finding. In high myopes, you will get symmetrical white ciliary body band visible. Now. Coming to angle closure, you have to learn to identify the Schwalbe's line and for that you require a corneal wedge. So you make a 30 degree angulation of the slit lamp and you will see two beams of light. 
first one from corneal endothelium corneal epithelium where they meet that point is the termination of desmets membrane or the starting point of the angle so here you can see two beams of light this one is corneal endothelium this one is corneal epithelium the point where they are meeting that point is the Schwalbe's line so this is known as the corneal wedge technique to identify the Schwalbe's line so if this apex is not visible that means the iris is covering this apex that means angle is completely closed so if you if there is a featureless angle you are not sure you make the wedge and the apex of the wedge denotes the Schwalbe's line if this wedge is not visible that means the iris is above this wedge and the angle is completely closed so remember corneal endothelium epithelium meeting point is the Schwalbe's line now who is the dr kalpana what is your comment on this sir it seems like a closed angle sir very good anything the, else the configuration of the iris is showing sir double hump sign very good so what does it iris what pathology syndrome, sir. very good so this is classical double hump sign sign wave configuration this you get when you have a prominent ciliary body which is pushing up and closing the iris so the diagnosis is confirmed on gonioscopy and later by ubm so the first is the equator of ciliary body, ciliary body and this is best diagnosed indentation type gonioscopes so this is sine wave configuration plateau iris syndrome now dr amit Bidasaria. So, uh, yes. can you comment on this angle? It is open angle or closed angle? Sir, uh, it is open angle. Very good. As I can see. Yes, sir. No, no, you will not get easily away. You come back. It's not yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. See, see, see this corneal wedge. Yes, sir. So, apex is here. Yes, sir. So why are you are saying open angle? So that is a common thing. This is pseudo trabecular meshwork. Sometimes you get trauma or deviators, increased pigmentation on the angle. So this pigmentation is not trabecular meshwork. Why? Because corneal wedge apex is here. This is Schwalbe's line. So this pigmentation is anterior to Schwalbe's line. So it cannot be the trabecular meshwork. That is why I don't comment on the pigmentation without seeing drawing the corneal apex so here this is the apex so this is a completely closed angle and this is pseudo pigment anterior to Schwalbe's line so this is not an open angle this is closed angle confirmed by the corneal wedge now who will answer this who is the deeper lacra he he is not visible although his name is visible Deepak, are you there? What about Dr. Parul Sadhwani? Yes, sir. So, can you comment on this? Uh, sir, this is a closed angle structure. Hmm. So, you need some coffee or tea, I think. Why you are saying closed angle? See very carefully. This white white oh, zone is visible. Ah, ciliary spur. is visible, then it cannot be closed angle. But the what smoke. is this? What is this? You see this white white band like structure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is this? What is posterior embryo toxin? So anyway, this is band like Schwalbe's line. If you make the corneal wedge, apex will be here. So many times in young patients or juvenile glaucoma, you will get this band like structure visible. This is prominent band like Schwalbe's line. This is sign of congenital anomaly in the angle. Okay. So this is open angle with band like Schwalbe's line. 
नाउ डॉक्टर सुनंदा और डॉक्टर अनीता मिश्रा डॉक्टर अनीता सांखला कैन यू प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ एंड कमेंट they need to come onto the video actually haan so all doctor. three are not uh... so you have sunanda to... sunanda you can answer come on to the video and answer try to answer yes, actually my video is live doesn't matter your answer your audio is working yes, sir actually no we will not give yes, you it my is lagging and it's like ओके डॉक्टर अंजु चौहान कैन यू कमेंट सो एनी वॉलंटियर एनी ऑफ द रेजिडेंट कैन डायग्नोज दिस सो नन ऑफ यू आर एबल टू डायग्नोज वाई यू आर गिविंग वेरी गुड आंसर इनिशियली हाँ प्रद्युमन एंड रंजन योर वीडियो आर ऑन सो रंजन इज देर नो प्रद्युमन एंड ट्राई टू डिस्क्राइब वॉट यू आर सींग एटलीस्ट बॉडी सर देन क्लियर फॉर इज थीकर लुकिंग सर हम्म सो दिस ओके ओके डोंट वरी सो हियर वेरी टिपिकल फाइंडिंग इज देयर यूनिफॉर्म डेंस पिगमेंट station on the trabecular meshwork and this is the superior trabecular meshwork so if you put in a gonioscope and you see this very dense pigmented trabecular meshwork superior diagnosis is pigment dispersion syndrome or pigmentary glaucoma so this sort of uniform dense pigmentation or trabecular meshwork you will not get in any other condition and especially in the superior angle so this is diagnostic of pigment dispersion or pigmentary glaucoma you see very dense uniform pigment on the trabecular meshwork this is open angle but pigment is blocking mechanically the angle so sir, sir what was the two big thicker white lines sir see this one is the scleral spur and it this is the trabecular mesh everything is getting obliterated by the dense pigmentary deposit and what will you see on the sit lamp in this patient krukenberg cornea krukenberg spindle you will see on the cornea okay so who is the next one video on so dr subudi you have to tell these resident none of them are putting video on so i can't ask i'm not sure whether they are interacting or no all otherwise, the residents are requested to come with the video otherwise pradyuman you will be yeah. you will <laughs> please volunteer don't worry Th have those you two then people I... who are active it's it's when fine you, yeah when you come to delhi then i will give you a treat hmm? so <laughs> this is slightly difficult but you tell me what you can see so there is heterogeneous deposition of pigments very good yeah. very good heterogeneous so deposition in between you exfoliation see... syndrome very good very good so this is called salt and pepper pigmentation you see the previous one video very dense uniform pigmentation and you see this video irregular pigmentation and this white fluffy material deposit in between yes. so this is called salt and pepper pigmentation so this is classical of pseudo exfoliation this is very important to diagnose because these patient have very severe course as compared to normal patient of open angle glaucoma okay very so this is pseudo exfoliation pigmentation now one more video dr parul sadwani has come on the video madam you have to volunteer for this what do you see now you have put in a gonioscope uh, sir again pigmentary deposition blocking the angle नहीं कुछ और है ध्यान से देखो सो हियर यू सी द टबेकला मेशवर्क एंड हियर आयरिस हियर आयरिस इज अटैचिंग टू टबेकला मेशवर्क एंड प्लस यू हैव दिस इरेगुलर पिगमेंटेशन स्पैटर्ड ऑन टबेकला मेशवर्क सो सी 
this is classical starting of angle closure glaucoma okay so yes, if you do gonioscopy in the opening um, sinica in the angle so yeah what? sinica in the angle have started and this pigment denote previously the iris has come in contact with the angle structure so there is a intermittent angle closure attack and iris is attaching to the tubercular meshwork so this is very classical of angle closure primary angle closure or primary angle closure glaucoma so moment you see this either you have to start the patient on pilocarpine or do gag iridotomy if patient is not willing or you don't have laser so this is the basic purpose of gonioscopy this is not open angle although it is pigmented because of the sinica formation iris attaching to the tubercular meshwork so this is angle closure immediately you have to do yag laser iridotomy now dr ranjan yes sir comment on this yes sir so ciliary band body is visible sir ciliary body band is visible okay very good then sir scleral spur visible then i'm not very good to... very good so einstein has very good nice quote imagination is more important than knowledge so i think you are applying that here so this is completely occludable angle yeah yeah it is completely closed nothing is visible where you are where you are seeing scleral spur the back nothing is visible it is completely closed angle okay and this is called mount fuji sign so mount fuji is volcanic mountain in japan so there is a mound here okay and if you see clearly behind the you ciliary processes are visible here so this sign angle is completely closed and there is a thick anteriorly displaced lens closing the angle so this is one of the signs to describe angle closure due to lens based mechanism so this is called mount fuji sign this mountain type volcanic structure complete angle closure no angle structure is visible okay so whoever diagnosed angle closure you have full marks and whoever diagnosed scleral spur and ciliary body band imagination is very good okay clear yes sir so now once you have put in the gonioscope and tubercular meshwork is not visible so then you have to ask the question whether this is sinical angle closure or appositional angle closure now you see you have put in the gonioscope primary position no angle structure is visible but when you manipulate the gonioscope the scleral spur become visible just see again primary position no angle structure visible and when you move the angle towards the patient's angle being viewed or ask the patient to look up so why this happens because it's a convex iris so primary position you are not able to view the angle structures but when you move the gonioscope towards the angle or ask the patient to look on the opposite side then you go over the convexity and you see scleral spur has become visible now so this is called appositional angle closure in primary position angle structure appear occluded but on manipulation the scleral spur has become visible so there is no sinical angle closure there is a appositional angle closure this is called manipulation gonioscopy which is done by movement of the goldman two mirror now who will comment on this dr deepak lakra dr ravi dr zahiruddin khan so why you people are not you are all of you are muted and most of you are not showing your video don't worry this is how you learn don't be afraid to answer wrong yes i learned gonios yeah, first, first you should pattern. do wrong then only you will learn what is right yeah so i learned gonioscopy only late into faculty we didn't understand gonioscopy jr ship we don't know yes. what is going on okay so we don't be scared 
who is the fun with the video on so only pradyumna can you tell me so by all of you the executive member yes, give arnab is there arnab is there pradyumna is there sunanda is his video is not working ranjan is there and so, parul is there so Pradh lot of people are there no problem so any of you tell me what is going on here so Yes. Sir, hello. It is a closed angle, sir, which on indentation uh, opens up and shows the angle. Uh, very good, very good, structures. very good. So this is Poisson's lens indentation goniscope. Primary position angle is appearing closed. When I am applying pressure, then skeletal spur is becoming visible. You see here. Yes, sir. So this is gold standard for differentiating a position angle closure from sinusoidal angle closure. you have to press the gonioscope you push aqueous into the angle and the angle opens up and if it doesn't open up then means angle here you see the skeletal yes, spur has become yes. visible ha yeah, very good so dr this dada you wanted to uh, uh, answer from dr zaiduddin khan yes yes sir i am I'm not a resident i am a professor in a high tech medical college oh, sorry sorry <laughs> that doesn't matter no no he is he is the president of os os i uh, <laughs> already introduced jahir okay worry. okay sorry sorry <laughs> till you can answer <laughs> no no we are by already answered that's why kept quiet yes, it's basically yes. for the residents so yeah, yeah, don't I know. Uh, we told we told already we inform doctor who will answer this dr arnab dr arnab you please answer so this is a, a fine blood vessels can be seen sir so what is diagnosis the neovascularization in the iris ha ah, what is likely cause so um, neovascular glaucoma no no cause of neovascular glaucoma most like most frequent cause one or two so um, pre existing old crvo or diabetes yes ha don't say pre existing old crvo so old. ischemic crvo crvo ischemic crvo or diabetic retinopathy advanced diabetic yeah. retinopathy retinopathy proliferative diabetes so yeah. this is very important now this is very important gonio video have we captured it so don't, normally you don't see this this is irregular vessels <coughs> crossing the serial spur arborizing on the tabecular meshwork now it is very important that when we see ischemic crvo or pdr patient we do undilated gonioscopy so most of the retina people they will dilate and call the patient and this is what is missed so now this patient is detected at a open angle stage so if you see this immediately panretinal photocoagulation has to be done so this is very important sign if you wait few weeks this will become complete angle closure closure yeah so this is open angle pathological neovascularization of the angle yeah can anyone tell the stages of uh, neovascularization of the angle again everyone is silent i am a retina person asking here <laughs> not for <laughs> hours So I think sir, is it a pre-rubiosis phase, pre-glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, and angle closure glaucoma phase? Yeah. So this this now patient, this is patient who has progressed. So this is neovascular glaucoma, but now sinusoidal stage, the sinusia have developed. So then it becomes very difficult to treat medically. You have to intervene surgically. That is why you have to do gonioscopy, CRVO, PDR patient before dilating them. diagnose at open angle stage wow. now who will diagnose this dr sunanda are you there can you dr sunanda so so our video is not working i think her audio and video is not working sir okay dr parul parul yeah Ah, uh, so sinusy some deposition is there at the angle structure. You are which which year? You are in which year of ophthalmology? So first year, first. Oh, don't then then don't worry, Doctor Ranjan. You are which year? Sir, first year. Amit Amit Vidasriya. Yes, sir. 
sir these are the broad uh, base finitia sir so this is so perpendicular anti base finitia ye dekho upar kuch likha hai tumhe dikh raha hai ye kya likha hai blue mein yes yeah. ar ar kya hota hai auto refraction glaucoma mein kya hota hai ar ar trauma बड़ा हिंट very anterior insertion of the iris to the broad cd body band so this is typical of axenfield's rigor anomaly okay and you will normally see this bilateral so dr ranjan yes sir dr arnav you have not answered anything arnav roy yes sir so the uh, presence of broad based peripheral anterior synechia so likely diagnosis so uh, angle closure glaucoma so again this is a 12 year old child okay now here you see the iris is going to the periphery of the cornea so this is how axon field rigor normally we look like on gonioscope you have very peripheral there is a deep anterior chamber so there is a anterior segment degenesis so there is a very anterior displaced solbes line and iris goes and attaches to the periphery of the cornea so this is not angle closure this is a developmental anomaly of the angle axon field rigor syndrome okay so this may be slightly difficult for you this is again this is a patient of juvenile open angle glaucoma so here two findings are there this prominent band like solbes line and anterior insertion of the iris so in the development of glaucomas the iris fails to recede from the trabecular meshwork so that is why you get a anterior insertion of the iris so that is sign of developmental glaucomas now who will answer this amit vidasriya sir uh, uh, angles structures are not na easy nahi hai to dhyan se answer karo to if you are right then i will give you a chocolate <laughs> sir uh, So not sure, sir. I'm not sure. Hey, could be bold, not sure. So I understand. This is very difficult. I am telling you. Yes, sir. You, you just comment. Look, look. What is happening? Comment. Look. What is happening? Yes, sir. Sir. Sir, similar only. Sir, signing. क्या लग रहा है मुझे सर क्या लग रहा है साइनिक सर साइनिक क्या लग रहा है एनी अदर एनी अदर रेजिडेंट हाँ भाई तुम बताओ सुनंदा Deep, Deepak. Sir, right side man, no. It is normal looking, sir. Normal left looking, eh? Okay, okay. Left hai. side, it is a uh, hazy, sir. The something is covering all the structures. You have done heavy dinner, kara? Look, that. Hey, you have done normal, look, kids. Take a look. See, this anyway, this is very difficult. Hey, so my, your resident, my resident, what did he say? Worms in the anterior chamber angle. Hmm. Diagnosis is aniridia. Okay, so here you have a rudimentary iris stump, rudimentary iris stump, which is blocking the angle in some areas. Secondary angle closure. These are small atrophic ciliary processes, and this is the lens equator visible. So aniridia is a misnomer. There is a rudimentary iris stump present. Okay. that goes and blocks the angle cause a secondary angle closure okay so this is aniridia 
ये एक बताना पड़ेगा अर्नब रॉय को सर दिस इज द सुपीरियर एंगल एंड इन द सुपीरियर एंगल वी कैन सी द पोस्टीरियर ट्रेबिकुलर मेशवर्क एंड द स्क्लेरल स्पर बट देर इज सम हाइपो पिगमेंटेड पैचेस लाइकली डायग्नोसिस ठीक है आप आप सब लोगों को गोनियोस्कोपी करना पड़ेगा ठीक है कल से गोनियोस्कोपी करना है ओपीडी में हाँ भाई अमित और प्रद्युमा बताओ क्या है दिस इज वाइडनिंग ऑफ द सिलरी बॉडी पैड इेगुलर वाइडनिंग ऑफ सिलरी बॉडी पैड इज एंगल रिसेशन सो एनी चाइल्ड क्रिकेट बॉल इंजरी ब्लंट इंजरी कम्स टू ओपीडी Don't do immediately. Call him back after six, six to eight weeks. Then you have to do peripheral retinal examination and before dilating, do gonioscopy. So if you see irregular widening of ciliary body band, this is angle recession. Patient needs lifelong follow up because they develop glaucoma ten, twenty years later. So every year, patient has to come in and get the pressure checked. So this is irregular widening of the ciliary body band, angle recession. Okay. <coughs> ये कौन बताएगा हाँ भाई अर्नब जी बताओ ये क्या है ये खत्म हो गया थोड़े स्टॉक खत्म हो गया दिस इज अ फॉरेन बॉडी लॉज इन द इंफीरियर एंगल दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दिस दिस वाज सम डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट वीआईपी टाइप पेशेंट सो ही केम टू आवर कैजुअलिटी एंड सेल्फ सील्ड परफोरेशन सो रेजिडेंट सेंट हिम ऑफ Sealed ho gaya, perforation, nothing to be done. So he had constant uveitis after that, not diagnosing here, there. So then somebody referred that Doctor Tanu se gonioscopy karalo. So this <laughs> this was the gonioscopy, <laughs> the glass foreign body in the angle. So he he was playing badminton and opponent hit shuttlecock and splinter hit glass. So glass foreign body in the angle. So I had to do gonioscopy and then. Under swan jack, for gonioscopy, remove this glass foreign body. So gonioscopy is very important for later on perforating injuries. Many times you will see foreign body lodged in the angle. So not only for diagnosis, intraoperatively gonioscopy you have to do, and then under gonioscopy guidance, remove this foreign body. So very good. Wasn't there uh, any in, uh, external sign of injury? No, there was self sealed perforation, self but gonioscopy nobody does know. Okay, okay, okay. Perforation. Mm -hmm. So, what is this, Doctor uh, Pradyumna? Yes, sir. Hello. Ha. Huh, what is this? Hello. Yes. Hello. Ha. Ha. Bolo. Bolo. Sunai de rahe. Sir. Sir. The. बताओ कोई डरने वाला बात ही कुछ भी बोलो तो बोलो अच्छा एनीबडी एल्स सुनोडिस क्लेफ्ट इन द्लीरा पेटेंट trabeclectomy ostium visible on gonioscopy you have to learn this and here yes dr sunanda what is the difference here sir this is a partially closed ostium so here patient has shallow ac and iris has gone into ostium okay so that is one of the causes of failure 
of trap so very important to do gonioscopy and diagnose this sometime what happen we have done trabeculectomy and pressure is high and people do digital massage so unless you diagnose this iris in the ostium we do massage it will go further mm. in so that is why it is very important what is the failure cause of failure of trabeculectomy so now this is the last difficult question so anybody parul why don't you answer kalpana what so anyway this may be difficult for you i told you the next 5 years you will see lot of mig is in minimally invasive glaucoma surgery so this is called intracanalicular stent so there is stenting of the shams canal so under gonioscopy visualization you have to operate you incise the trabecular mesh rock and pull put in this implant to dilate the shams canal so this is called hydrus intracanalicular stent okay so diagnostic gonioscopy i have shown you you require to do international gonioscopy for all these procedures and this is just i am showing you for for primary congenital glaucoma nowadays 360 degree trabeculectomy sorry is done with the illuminated micro catheter so this micro catheter is inserted in the canal of slam it will go 360 degree and you can visualize the movement of this catheter through the gonioscope see now this catheter is moving through the canal of slam so all these are the recent advances in glaucoma surgery where you require intraoperative gonioscopy and this was very interesting patient my resident said sir there is prominent solvage line and actually there was a wooden stick lying in the anterior chamber angle you see this yes, yes. there was broom stick injury wooden stick in the angle now you see I'm, at the end of surgery this wooden stick has come into the ia so gonioscopy sometimes it reveals very fascinating things in the anterior chamber angle so part of ophthalmic evaluation you must do gonioscopy imagine this huge broom stick in the anterior chamber angle okay so un until we did gonioscopy not possible so now by manually vitoretinal forceps holding and removing this large you can see this broom stick hai in the anterior chamber angle so anyway if you want to revise this so this is free website world glaucoma association wga.1 you can register here you have all the glaucoma teaching modules here iop gonioscopy perimetry optic nerve oct and lot of questions on glaucoma are answered here frequently asked questions in glaucoma so all residents can register here is totally free and you can see all the gonioscopy videos and optic now and other evaluation so i will close here any questions are most welcome thank you very much